The crisis in Ukraine, another dramatic escalation overnight, some of the worst violence since the conflict began, and new fears that Putin will invade. ABC's Mohamed Lila is on the scene in eastern Ukraine with the latest. It's the most dramatic escalation of violence since the crisis began. Overnight, Ukrainian tanks and troops moving into the town of Kramatorsk, held by pro-Russian separatists. Just hours earlier, this woman there telling us, I feel terrible. I'm in my own country and my own army is taking action against me. In the country's east, the Ukrainian government admits it's already lost control. Pro-Russian militants have swept through nearly every town. This after demonstrators set fire to a pro-Russian separatist headquarters. At least 31 people dead, most of them burned alive. The fighting now so serious overnight, America's former ambassador to Moscow admitting, this is real, this is war. 600 American troops are being sent to neighboring countries in case of a wider conflict. Meanwhile, as we've seen firsthand, pro-Russian checkpoints are popping up everywhere. The commander here making the threat obvious. What he's told us is that he can't guarantee our safety if we cross this checkpoint, so we're taking a risk if we go through. The question now, what will it take for all of this violence to come to an end? Ukraine's acting prime minister says we're now in the most dangerous 10 days of this conflict. Vladimir Putin is demanding that Ukrainian troops retreat, and on the ground, separatists say they will go ahead with the referendum in exactly one week. And George, if they vote for independence, there's no telling what will happen next. Thanks, Mohamed Lila, for that. Let's bring in our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, at the White House this morning. And Martha, let me begin with you. That comment uh, from the former U.S. Ambassador Michael McFaul, this is real, this is war, really striking. And But U.S. officials still don't know how far Putin wants to go. Does he just want to stir up trouble in Ukraine or actually invade? Well, they really don't know, but with such a dramatic escalation over the weekend with all of this fighting, there has been so much concern about whether this turns into an all-out war. I was in Eastern Europe uh, last week, and I was with the U.S. forces who are training Latvian and Lithuanian troops. The general who was in charge of those exercises said he is very concerned that Russia will go into eastern Ukraine. And, George, if that happens, I think you will see a lot more troops in our NATO allies in those countries like Lithuania and Latvia. And, John, one of the things we've seen with this struggle over sanctions are is that the United States has limited means to deter Putin. No question about that, George, but the White House is prepared to lower the boom of much broader economic sanctions than we've seen so far, targeting entire sectors of the Russian economy, and they believe Russia will go along if Russia invades, uh, that Europe will go along if Russia invades. But here's the thing. White House officials say that these sanctions could be triggered even without a Russian invasion if those Russian separatist groups do anything to disrupt the presidential election that is scheduled uh, for later this month in Ukraine. But, George, look. Leverage is limited. The president himself has not has acknowledged there is no guarantee sanctions will work.